This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the best of CES 2020, the big consumer electronics trade show. Now, obviously, I'm going to cover the kind of topics and things that I usually review and cover, and not the world of cars, not that that isn't fun and washing machines and whatever else there is. Let's get on to the things we do talk about. For mobile phones, usually there's not a lot at CES. There are other shows, like Mobile World Congress is coming up at the end of February, and I'll be attending and covering that, where more phones are announced, and Samsung's going to have their own event soon, February 11th, to show up what will probably be called the Galaxy S20, otherwise known as what you would think would be the Galaxy S11, and maybe the Fold 2, which should be a flip phone style folding screen phone, not unlike the Moto Razr, which is delayed, but hopefully will come to market soon. So most of the stuff is laptops and tablets in the Windows arena. And as you might guess, folding isn't just about phones anymore. Now we have the ThinkPad X1 Fold. That's right, it's a 13.3 inch foldable PC. And it's an LG foldable display that they're using. And Lenovo says they've been working years on making a sturdy hinge. Given how mil-spec durable and trustworthy, generally speaking, ThinkPad products are, I have pretty good faith in their hinge. When it comes to folding displays, well, this Galaxy Fold has actually been holding up pretty well that I reviewed. And so there's hope. But do you need a 13.3 inch folding PC? Well, you can decide. It has an undisclosed CPU. It's an Intel CPU, but generationally we don't quite know what's going on there yet. It's going to run Windows 10 Pro, not Windows 10 X, which is designed for multi-screen and foldable computers, but that's going to be coming, that operating system, probably at the end of the year with Microsoft's own Surface Duo and Neo products. But this is an actual shipping product mid-year 2020, and it's going to be $2,500. So pricey, but then again, look at the price of a Galaxy Fold. So $2,500 is not that bad. 8 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD in this thing. And the other neat thing is it has a removable ThinkPad-esque keyboard with your usual good ThinkPad ergonomics. You lay it across the bottom screen when you put it in clamshell mode. So no, you know, it doesn't rock your world to type on glass. Not for most of us anyway. So that answers that problem. Next up, there's the Lenovo ThinkBook Plus. Lenovo is doing a lot of really exciting things at this CES, and in some cases, they're actually going to ship with Dell's only showing off as a concept. We'll get into the Dell product stuff soon, though. So this one is a 13.3-inch laptop with a full HD IPS display, the usual Intel 10th Gen CPU inside, you know. But the lid on it has a 10.8-inch e-ink display because Lenovo, e-ink. They're just going to keep trying to find a way to put e-ink on stuff until it actually sticks and works for people. And this might be it. So using modern standby and, and the Windows Hello IR camera to unlock quickly, you don't have to open up your PC to quickly take notes, do diagrams, that sort of stuff. Uh, it could be pretty cool to see your notifications and all that sort of thing. And it supports a pen as well. That one will be $2,100, not so cheap, and will be available in March. There's going to be a Yoga 5G. The, they say it's going to be the first Vive G PC. We'll see if that's the case. And it's going to do all flavors because this is going to run the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU. So it's Windows on ARM. And not too excited by that. But yeah, it's going to be the higher end CPU. So it's going to do millimeter wave, mid band, and low band 5G for those who really need speed on the go and can find coverage. And remember the NEC La Vie Z that Lenovo co-marketed and brought to the United States? Well, they're back again with the La Vie Vega, which sort of competes with mobile workstations. A 15.6-inch OLED display, pretty thin and pretty light, uh, under 4 pounds, which is under 2 kilograms. And it looks like a pretty nice PC. Now, it is going to run Intel H-series CPUs as Core i7-9750H. But not really killer graphics there, but it's going to be relatively light. And then there's going to be a La Vie Mobile, which is a much more portable and more affordable kind of laptop. That one weighs 837 grams, which is under 2 pounds. Wow, it's going to be about $1,600 and should be available in March. As ever, other than those of you who do fancy an NEC marketed by Lenovo PC. There's the LG Grams, the 15 and the 17. They're getting a refresh again as crazy light, but still mainstream laptops. Up, they're really the same design that we've seen, but refreshed with Intel 10th generation Ice Lake CPUs and Iris Plus graphics. And your typical excellent battery life because they have 80 watt hour batteries, which is a big battery for an Ultrabook. For HP, not much. They don't always do a big rollout at CES. So when it comes to laptops and that sort of thing, they didn't have much to say. Asus, they have the ZenBook 
Duo. We already reviewed the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, which is a 15.6-inch mobile workstation with a 4K OLED display and a secondary screen plus display, a second big wide screen above the keyboard. So this is the lighter version of that, around 3.3 pounds, which is about one and a half kilograms or so, and less expensive, I'm sure, because the mobile workstations had to be more expensive, higher end specs. But this is running on Ultrabook CPUs with a 14-inch main screen, full HD IPS, a little less exciting, and NVIDIA MX250 graphics. But if you really liked the form factor and the idea of having that second screen above the keyboard, but you didn't need the mobile workstation chops and weight, well, it's for you. Then there's Dell. They have the refreshed XPS 13, which is a real minor refresh. The big change is really that they're giving it a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen instead of the usual 16 by 9. So that brings it in line with the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 that we reviewed not so long ago. They also have the Dell G5 15-inch special edition gaming laptop, which is going to have the latest edition of Ryzen H-series CPU inside. That's H-series. And it should be an interesting one because really, Ryzen's really starting to find their steam here. And this might be the one that actually gives Intel for a run for their money on the mobile platform. For concepts, it was interesting. So like I said, Lenovo is shipping some things that Dell only showed off as concepts, never going to be for sale kind of thing. First, there's the Dell Duet, which is a little like the Microsoft Surface Duo, only bigger. Two 13-inch displays connected by a hinge or two hinges and very thin bezels. Interesting idea, a bigger... I don't know so much. And they too will have a have shown a removable keyboard when that was kind of like a thin Alcantara design, one that would cover part of the bottom display for typing ease. Then there is the Ori, which is a, it's a lot like the ThinkPad X1 Fold, only it's a concept and it won't be shipping. It's a 13.3 inch foldable PC. And lastly, there is the UFO, which looks a lot like a big Nintendo Switch, complete with Joy-Con sort of controllers that are detachable and you can snap the two of them together. And this is an 8 inch Windows PC though for gaming. And it has the Alien Head logo on it. They got some Alienware branding going on. So obviously it'd be kind of big and kind of heavy and probably run hot. We've seen people trying to make handheld Windows gaming machines before, but it was just a concept and it looked pretty slick. So there you have it. That's my best of CES 2020, obviously focusing, focusing on the sort of things that we cover, which will be laptops, phones, tablets. You get the idea. So yes, it's a folding future, whether you like it or not, folks, and a dual screen future as well, obviously, but there are still some good things coming. For those of you who like normal stuff, there is still the XPS 13 getting better. And then of course, Lenovo is also doing refreshes of things like the X1 Carbon and the X1 Yoga. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and do hit that notification bell.